Gorge. I'm your host, Tracy Martin. If you guys have watched any of our episodes up until this point, I know you know what we are about. We are talking about life through the fire and being forged through life lessons, through adversities, grit, and resilience. And I am so excited to have with me in studio, Tony Mandrich. I am going to read a little bit about the accomplishments of this man. And when I say a little bit, I only got a snippet because there's a whole lot more. But, you know, in the, it says in the mid 1980s, he played college football in Michigan State University, earning honors such as using such as the named All-American twice, Big Ten Lineman of the Year twice, 1987, 1988. In 1987 season, Michigan State clinched the Big Ten Championships and 1988 Rose Bowl. I mean, if you think about the sports today, I love this era of sports personally. Um, and it goes back to drafted in the NFL in 1989, four-year career as an offensive tackle in Green Bay Packers and three years at the Indiana Colts. Um, and I'm going to let you jump in here, Tony, because I was blessed to be able to have Tony come into one of our events one day. And the kids absolutely loved hearing Tony's message. And what I pick up on as a coach is what built you. That's what I pick up on. So I'm going to let Tony jump in here and pick it up from there. Um, tell me a little bit more about your story as you entered into that era of where you were doing football. Well, it, and I'll even go back like just a little bit earlier to 11 years old and growing up in Canada where I made a like a literally a conscious decision that when I grow up, you know, it's like the, when I grew up story. Right, I right. A, so I was like, when I grow up, I want to be a pro football player in the NFL because I loved watching it. And when I look at that, when I see kids now that are 11, I'm like, wow, that was a pretty young age yeah. to make a kind of like a career decision. And through just work and steps, doing the right steps and um, having some luck, you got to have some luck not to get hurt. And then right. other life events not to happen, you know, that might derail you. Um, it ended up, you know, what you read ended up happening and then went to Green Bay and then, then kind of got derailed in Green Bay of my own doing, of my own doing with, you know, drug and alcohol abuse. So um, when you were 11, what, when you say it was what you knew you wanted to do, where did the conviction come from? It was, um, so we, we grew up in Southern Ontario. So it was a 45 minute drive to Buffalo, a three hour drive to Detroit. So I would always get those games on TV because it's not like today, right? You can watch any game. Right? Exactly. So those are like, you know, the two, the two games or two teams or college football, like in those two states you would watch, you know, it was just one of those, it was one of those, um, feelings that as a kid and even now as an adult that I get for, for certain things where it's like, man, would that be cool to do? Like, that's what, you know, I don't think I ever used the, the phrase of that's kind of like a man's man, or that's kind of like, you know, so like awesome. There's other words I could use to describe it, or metaphors, but, um, I would be like that, you know, never did I think, Hey, it'd be great because you can make a lot of money. Right, I thought right. that after I was in college, right? <laughs> yeah. But at 11, I think it's right. the dream not, of the game. Right. Right? It's the dream of the game. And and it's just, it made my blood rush. Is the only, like, making my blood rush through my veins is the best description that I can give you about how I felt at 11 about that. How'd your family feel? My family was supportive. My brother, I had a brother who was five years older, played football. Um, mom and dad were immigrants from communist Yugoslavia. Uh, so they were immigrants in Canada, which was, you know, not, not an uncommon story and right. not, not an uncommon story here in the U S right. Right. Um, so very blue collar family and, and they supported me, but they rarely went to games because they were working mm. to pay the mortgage right. or to do whatever. Um, and I never felt like I like I, I never had that feeling of, well, my mom or dad are not at the game. Right. right. Um, it, I, was it wasn't like a lack of support like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they were, they were supportive. Uh, How old were your parents when they came here? They came in 55. So they were in their uh, early to mid twenties. Okay. Yeah. And do they have any thoughts around that? Like, I mean, did you hear stories around? What oh my gosh. That's uh, yeah. To this day. I mean, there, there's stories that I've heard over, you know, growing up my right. whole life. Um, 
where I think when I have it tough, even today, yeah. if I think I have it tough or if I'm in a self-pity moment of, oh man, I wish I would, or but I think of some of those stories, they just pop into my head and I'm like, you have no idea what tough is. Yeah. Well, you hear the point of reference, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, or something challenging, right? It's like, yeah, uh, I know it's going to be challenging. I know it's going to be hard, but man, and then I'll think about, I'll reference it to some of the stories that they had shared with me, like first hand information. Right, right. And I'm like, like what they did, my story or my adversity will pale in comparison. Yeah. So I'm like, just shut up and do it. Like yeah. do my thing, whatever I need to do. But I think too, I think back then, I think, cause like we look at the world today and we talk about this sometimes about we're raising weak people, mm -hmm. you know, really are mentally, physically, spiritually, the whole part of it. Right. Absolutely. So what was your, what was your conversation around when you said earlier before we off air, we said, you've always believed in God. Mm -hmm. Was that, was that foundational in your home? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was an altar boy for, um, almost 10 years. I uh, went to church every Sunday growing up, you know, probably more than half, probably 51% of the time didn't want to go. Yeah. But I wasn't like, you know, look, you go, you just do what your your mom and dad tell you to do and, and you do. And so there was a, definitely a foundation of God in the house, you know, at home, going to church, going to Sunday school, going to, you know, Catholic high school or Catholic uh, elementary school or, or whatever the case may be. Um, always, and I always believed in God, uh, always. Um, what was college Tony like? You know, I was just talking to somebody the other day, yesterday about this. Um, and I thought back and I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of like nonsense, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of great times. There's a, there, but there's degrees of nonsense. Yeah. Right. I mean, like today's nonsense is different than yeah, yeah, back yeah. then of nonsense. Right? Yeah. Today's nonsense, I wouldn't even consider nonsense. Exactly. I would just consider it stupidity. Exactly. And and there's a narrative behind it. Right. Today. Right. Like there's what's going on today is is angers me. Yes. And the nonsense I'm talking about is kid. You know, immature kid nonsense totally. stuff, right? Totally. Um, That's why I wanted to clarify that because I believe that too. I believe yeah. that we used to do stuff in school and we, I laugh at it. You know, I mean, I got in trouble, but I right. look at it now. I'm like, I wish right. the kids were doing that right, right now. Exactly. Personally. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I've never, a story, I'll tell you a quick story that I've never, I don't think I've ever shared on the air. It, it was fall time in East Lansing, Michigan, and we're walking by one of these old houses. We're drinking and probably the second year in college. And there were the, there was like eight huge garbage bags full of leaves that were put out by the front lawn of this beautiful old house, you know. I had painstakingly put them in the bag. Put them in the bag so they could be picked up by the city or whatever. Well, as we're coming home from the bar, we had this great idea of, hey, why don't we just empty these garbage bags out and just like <laughs> spread all the leaves over? Just being dumb, right? Yeah. Well, with our luck, of course, there was a, a squad car like a block away <laughs> and like these cops pull up on us. Oh, my God. And we're like, well, you know, we're in the football team scholarships. And I'm yeah. what's running through my head is I've put in all this work to get here, been lucky enough to get here, got a scholarship. And now if I get arrested and get in trouble, I'm going to lose my scholarship and be yeah. sent back home. And, you know, the, the the cops were, you know, they were. I would say they were fair. They they were like, either pick it all up, everybody, all you guys yeah. pick it all, put it back in the bags. Um, and, you know, don't do it again. We'll let you go. Or, you know, we're yeah, going to arrest you. Price. So we were all like. Yeah. But they gave <laughs> you an opportunity. They right? gave us an opportunity. And, yeah. and those kinds of things, though, Tony, I mean, I, I again, to a degree. Yeah. But you think about it, right? You right away thought, what's the consequence for this? Right. So when you said today makes you angry, tell me what that is. The, what makes me angry now is these kids it's like i don't want there's a part of me that says and this is in my in, in my heart it's true there's a part of me that says it's not their fault these kids fault right. um because i put myself in their shoes and if i'm being influenced and taught what they're being taught from a authority figure like a teacher 
Well, that's somebody that I, when I was, you know, growing up, I was told to trust and believe or your guidance counselor or your principal or, you know, yeah. your local, you know, authorities. Right. To me, that's an authority. Right. Uh, what they're being taught now is, I mean, it's evil. Yeah. It's e like, it's literally evil. It's not just bad. It's, it's evil. Right. Unfortunately, it's going to take decades to undo. Um, I agree with you. I think the lasting, we're already seeing repercussions of what's going on with people, you know, with everything from suicide rates to just so so much violence, just everything going on. I mean, levels of education, testing going down. It's like yeah. we've lowered our standards we've done as, a, a as a, right, as a, right, yeah. as a whole group of, of schooling, we've lowered the standards so the kids don't feel bad about themselves. Right. And it's like, well, wait a second. If isn't it about competence and isn't it about where it's in competition? Cause that's what really is part of what made this country great Exactly, is the competition and, and innovative. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's, it, it makes me angry because I feel that my kids are part of that. Yeah. Um, part of that is not their fault. Now that they're old enough, um, you know, late twenties, early thirties, you know, they sh they're old enough to see now a difference. They've right, been right. exposed they have a to a difference, yeah. just like I do. Um, and it, it angers me be because it's going to take decades. It, will I be around? Maybe. Um, you know, my plan is 100, right, to get to 100. Yeah. Uh, will I be around? I don't know. I hope so because I want to see the change happen. Yeah. The pendulum has swung so yeah. far the other way, it has. I think, and 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 it's it's like what we said earlier. You look at a lot of the kids today, mm -hmm. and I mean, I'm in there too, and you give them grace. Mm -hmm. I always say, I always say, when I meet a, a a client, a young client, and then I meet the parents, I give the grace to the kid, right? Because I'm like, there's a lack, there's a, I know that, so I get that in poor kid. There's and 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 the, but it goes back to that's like the first like you said the, the authority right our parents are our right. first authority yes you know and when you've been blessed to have good solid hardworking faithful parents yes it changes the game for you it just does it is so important you know and I'll call myself out on this I think one of the most one of my most crucial failures and I had a big failure in football at Green Bay and luckily I had a second chance oh, to We're going to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and and luckily I had a, a chance to make up for some of what could be made up in Indy but I would consider one of my biggest failures is you know once I got divorced and the kids were young um not having a mom and dad in the house. Yeah. I think that's crucial. It's hard. It's I think really it's hard. crucial. I, yeah. I, I really, not that it can't be done successfully. Yes. The odds are against you. I think, you know, but, you know, and, and being an ad, like, uh, you know, taking the opposite side and saying, well, if you have a, a mom and dad that are constantly fighting, that's not a good example either. Right. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse. I'm just going to say, I think it's crucial yeah. to have a father figure and a mother figure in the house, preferably, obviously, the mom and dad. Right. Um, but I failed there epically. And, and I think that's part of the reason of my relationship today with my girls, which is kind of non-existent. Yeah. And I think it's hard to Tony though, whenever you go through something like that, because one of the things I hear a lot of, you know, in divorced families or whatever, is that, you know, I deserve to be happy as a parent. I deserve these things. Yeah. And I never want to tell anyone that they don't. However, you're a parent first, Yes, you know, and, and I have a lot, I coach a lot of divorced parents and they're, you know, I'm going to go do my thing. This is what's important to me. And the, and the sad thing is there's so much nuance in those conversations, yeah. content or context that we don't actually take into consideration, Yeah, you know, and we realize, and I, I literally had this conversation with a father the other day mm -hmm. and he's like, so you're saying I don't deserve to be happy and to, and to start dating and that kind of stuff. Right. And I said, Absolutely. I'm not saying that at all. I said, but there, but there, again, there's a season. I think that we have yeah. to have those conversations around yeah. that. I, I think th the thing where I see like a, a fail that can be corrected and is being corrected in circles. And I know I'm correcting in myself is I will ask people, okay, well, tell me what your definition of 
I deserve to be happy is. Great question. I need to know what that is. Right. Um, because what my interpretation of that is and what your interpretation of that is might be two totally different things. It usually is. And it usually is. Yes. And so when communicating now, I try to use the least amount of words as possible <laughs> and keep it very simple and to the point and be clear and to even repeat to them, back to them, this is what I'm hearing you say. Right. You know, uh, I'm hearing you say you would like to do this and you would like it to look this way. Is that correct? We are seeking to understand, which correct. we forgot how to do. Right. You know, we forget how Instead to do that. Instead of assumption. Totally. And, right. and I think, but I think that's the way our world's built right now yeah. with, with these wonderful devices too. Yeah. It's a whole nother, it's a whole yeah. nother ball game. So when you say that you, what you went through in the NFL and stuff like that. So can you describe that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got... <clears throat> You know, you work your whole, well, since 11 years old, you yeah. kind of, the goal is set. And literally, you know, when you're 18, 19 years old, you're in college as a freshman. So that was only a seven year span. I'd spent those seven years working out, focusing, obviously going to school, doing everything right. and still living under, under mom and dad's roof. But I was extremely focused. I didn't really party that much. Um, and because I had a a goal that was more important to me than party. Yeah, you had a target. I had a target. And once I got to college, ended up, you know, really doubling down on the focus. But I also doubled down by adding something, steroids, adding something that was against the rules. Yeah. Um, and there's no excuse for that. It's just flat out wrong. And I was wrong for doing it. But then getting drafted to Green Bay, you know, I replaced the steroids because because the testing in the NFL was way more sophisticated, replaced the steroids with alcohol and painkillers. Mm -hmm. To fill the void with something. Right. God forbid I fill it with God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always tell that if there's a void, you gotta you gotta be careful what you fill it with. So, so I fill it with you know opiates and that, and then it's like it kept saying it can't get worse, and it keeps getting worse, and it got worse, and it got worse all the way till, kind of got kicked out of the league in 93 after my contract was out of the league for three years. Um, I, th I thought it couldn't get worse. It got worse. My yeah. brother died at 31 of cancer. Um, a year later, my parents get divorced after, all, after everything they've been through. When I think about some of the stories and, you know, how long were they married? I, I want to say it was over 30 years. Okay. Yeah. It was a long time. It was a year after my brother's death. Okay. Yeah. So was that the influence on the divorce? I believe there was a 51% of it. Okay. I, be, I think, I think it was, my mom had a really hard time getting over it. It was second child. She's lost. She lost, they, they lost their first child at six months, which would have been my sister, Maria, um, in Yugoslavia. Wow. When she was six months old, she died from spinal meningitis. And it was one of those, you know, the doctor was like, yes, we can cure this, but we need, you know, two sheep and a cow. Like yeah. Because that's what the barter was, right? Yeah. If you didn't have money or gold, right? Right. They didn't have it, so there was no care. Wow. No medical care. So she passed, and then mom and dad looked at each other and were like, well, if, well, if we're going to have any kind of a life, it's not going to be here. Right. So that's when they escaped to Austria, stayed in a refugee camp for nine months while Canada did a background check. They almost kind of had like a stay in Mexico policy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Except it was stay in Austria. So yeah. You're cleared that you're not a criminal or right. you're not something that Canada doesn't want. And, wow, shocking idea. Right? Like how original. <laughs> and, you know, no internet, no nothing. Right? And, you know, so they stayed there nine months and then took the boat over and um, came literally with nothing. Wow. And like the story is like incredible. And there's a lot of stories like that out there. Yeah. I thought it was unique to mom and dad because that's the only story I'd kind of really heard. But then as I got more exposed, I, yeah. just, I started seeing, well, this, it's still a unique story. It's a tremendous story. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just a tremendous yeah. story. And what people can overcome um, is incredible. But um, so that was a difficult time span between losing your brother and then your parents' divorce. Yes. And, and that was my last year of the. Uh, like opioid abuse and, and alcohol use. Um, God was shaking everything that could be oh, shaken. <laughs> the foundation, like my foundations, yes. my hero, my brother, yeah, gone. Um, the foundation, mom and dad are always there. They're married. Like that's mom and dad. Yeah. They're always back in Canada. You know, right. they're, they're there. Now they're getting divorced. 
you saw, you know, I kept saying, can't get worse, can't get worse. It kept getting worse. And then finally, Can you I know, interject really quick, Tony, what you just said, just because I hear, I hear this so much where parents don't realize what their impact does to younger, to their, to their kids, no matter the age. I hear this all the time, right? It's, it's like, cause that's your foundation. It's your identity. It, and, yeah. and even though they may have been done with whatever the marriage or right. whatever they went through, right. it, 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 you can't, it can't not affect you. No, it, it, you're right. And, uh, and you have, and, and I think a lot of times you have no idea how it can affect the kid, depending right. on the kid. Right. Right. Um, or, you know, the adolescent, um, it, it, some come out resilient. Yeah. You know, um, some come out with a smothering mother, which is not the best either. Yeah, right. Yeah. Because now, under fathers. I right. See how do time. you, you know, deal with adversity if you've been protected your whole life? Right. Right. You so can't. you can't. You can't. You'll, Welcome you'll, to 2020. Right. <laughs> We're living in that world. Exactly. So, you know, my whole foundation was shook and sobriety. So the miracle of sobriety happened only by an act of God. You know, and, and, you know, the interesting thing was going through all of that turmoil, um, of even of my, just my own personal turmoil of the addiction, I, I was never mad at God. I really never had a, like, was never mad at God. I, when my brother died, I wasn't mad at God. The only time I was, and this is recent, this was in 2017. The only time I, I was, I I don't even want to say I was mad, but I felt that God was unfair because, because when you know, my mom died of Alzheimer's right? and she, so first she had dementia and then, di you know, died and that lasted seven years. So it's kind of like you lose her twice. You lose her mentally. Yes. Then you lose her physically. That's so true. And that was really hard on me. Um, even knowing that she was gonna, you know, that her life was coming to an end soon, it was hard. And, and thinking about everything she went through. And all the top, one of the toughest people, not just women, people I've ever met in my life. And I, and I felt like she didn't deserve to die that type of death because it wasn't a pretty death. Yeah. And so I, f I wasn't mad at God, but I felt that he was unfair. Well, you know, my opinion on that's changed. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah. I didn't stay in that space too long. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, there was a great, there were some great lessons that came from that. Yeah. Even that was a huge adversity for me. Yeah. Um, and there was nine months where seven to nine months where I was kind of like in a, I don't want to say a clinical depression, but I was in a deep, dark area. Yeah. Uh, emotionally and everything. I could walk out the door and put a smile on my face. But when I closed that door, it was like just gloomy. Yeah. Once I pulled myself out of it or once you know, with the help of God, really, that pulled me out of it. Yeah. I always knew there was a lesson. There's always a lesson in great adversity. I love that you say that. There is always so a lesson. And I was like, I know there's a lesson here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the lesson's revealed fairly quickly. Sometimes it takes some time. Sometimes it's not revealed for years. Right. And it was about five, six months later, and I was doing something that had nothing to do with my mom or anything, and it just popped into my head, though what the lesson was, it was like that, like, like I got hit and, the, <laughs> and it was like, here, this is why that, you know, that happened. And the lesson was during that time that I was so down, not once did it ever cross my mind, never even crossed my mind to pick up a drink or a drug to numb the pain. Mm. And I thought that's the lesson. It's like, you know, God removed that obsession and compulsion from me. Yeah. And I had built enough, you know, ins insurance, I guess, by, right. you know, working with people in that field that that never even crossed my mind because I knew that if I drank, it's not going to bring her back to life. No. And, or, or, and, and it wouldn't make her happy. Right. If I, so, but I never even thought about it. Never even thought about the drinking or drugging. So I'm like, to me, that was like the, the obvious lesson. Well, there was a restoration there. I yeah. Think, you know, that you didn't have to go back to that. Yeah. And my mom, you know, and to and tell you a story inside a story here, I went my senior year of high school, I moved to Ohio because my brother went to Kent State University. So I went to Kent Roosevelt High School my senior year for the sole purpose of getting exposure to to get a scholarship potentially to play college football. One well, because in Canada at that time they didn't recruit. 
So my mom and dad had to sign off guardianship to my brother if they even agreed to do it. Oh, wow. So they did agree to do it. Um, you know, because I used the argument of, look, you guys left your country, right? You, <laughs> Go, you know, come back to bite us. And, and my mom gave me the old eye roll, right? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but we were leaving communism. We yeah. weren't leaving With Canada. Your excuse. <laughs> right. So, um, so, you know, one of the things she told me later in life in, in her last years, five years of life is she always regretted signing that piece of paper, giving my brother guardianship and letting me go to America. So she had a little bit, she had some resentment towards the USA. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. And wouldn't you know, she dies on July 4th. Oh my gosh. And I thought to myself, isn't that funny? Like, yeah. I mean, I, as, as you, even as I was, you know, as I was told that she had passed right. at, at like moments before that, right. I thought internally there was a little bit of a giggle about my mom being like, you know, F you. I was say, she's kind of flipping it off at this point. Oh, my you gosh. You know, and um, so, yeah, that was, I always found that interesting. Don't you think it's interesting how impactful parents are yeah. on their kids' lives? Like, like how impactful everything was. So when you were, when you had that moment of like, there's a lesson here, right? Yeah. The restoration, you didn't reach for that. What was your relationship with God at that point? It was good. Okay. Uh, it, my relationship with God has always been good. Um, my understanding of God has been fair. I'm talking about understanding yes. of God. Yeah. Always had faith, 100%. Always believed in salvation. Um, and then three years ago, three and a half years ago, when all these things started to happen in, in the world, yeah. and then my daughter's phone call was a big influence, um, that adversity. Right. Um the adversity of what's going on in the world, just with everything from pandemic to, you know, you could, you could say, this is, this is the color purple. And it's like, <laughs> well, no, it's not. It looks like black and with a white sticker underneath exactly. that. And be like, no, it's purple. And I'll fight you to the death for it. Right. And, right. and you know, like just common sense didn't make sense anymore. Right. Those were huge adversities. Um, well, I think, and like we I, we talked about earlier with another guest I had, it, they're spiritual. We're in a spiritual battle. Absolutely. And I think that if you don't have something, you it, it's what what I see so much, and even like listening to your story, it's like we have these things that we go through, mm -hmm. right? And I always say this that are actually growing us. You know, yes. if we allow them to, no matter who comes in our world, right? We can learn mm -hmm. from everyone. Absolutely. But if we can't have the humility and the discernment. So like what you're saying, this is purple, this is black, right. have these conversations. It feels like, you know, what God creates, Satan counterfeits, right? So it feels like this is a counterfeit of yeah. our language, of our of our definitions of words, of everything. Absolutely. I, we, could, we could always, before that, sit down and debate. Right. Even if we disagree. Yeah. And still be, and we don't have to be friends, but if we were friends, we would still remain friends. Right. Just because you see something, well, it doesn't even have to be political. Right, right, we could, right. But, People were like arguing or fighting to the death for stuff that made no sense. Right. Like that wasn't worth a, a life. Well, I think people want to have a have a fight about I want you to think the way that I think. Right. Or we can't talk. Right. Right. There's like that line. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. But there's like that line, right? right? It's like, oh, you're one of those, or right. oh, you believe in this. Right. And it's like, it's like we forgot the nuance. We forgot anything to have a conversation right. about it. What do you think? I mean, I, I know what you said three and a half years ago was kind of like your marker, mm -hmm. right? Of what you see. What did you see? I saw evil. Okay. Like, like I always had a notion of like, you know, you get a sense in a room mm -hmm. or, or like a sense in a certain space. And there might not even be anybody there, like physically right. a person, but you sense that something here is dark and evil. Yeah. Um, well, I was having that feeling of the world mm -hmm. and a lot of it of world leaders. Yes. So I, I was like, okay, well, there's politicians will always be politicians. Right. But this is like um, malfeasance. This is, you know, nefarious. Yes. This is evil. Um, and this goes against my understanding of the God as I understand him. Right, right. The biggest, one of the biggest blessings of all that controversy was like no, I. It was like an an into like a natural thing for me to go. Always go back to fundamentals. 
Where does the fundamental come from? Where does the authority right. of truth come from? Right. The Bible. What's right. all truth based from? The Bible. What's our society based from? The Bible. Mm -hmm. What's our court system based from? The Bible. There, it's, so it's, I've known that, just haven't really studied it. Right. That was the catalyst for me to start studying the Bible and start surrounding myself with people that are pastors that go back to the fundamentals of the gospel, not the... Ch I don't want to say not the church, but not the mega church. Right, right. Not the whole Just Christian the umbrella yes. of a lot of it being bad theology. Right. A lot of it is bad theology, and and people are not being taught what the gospel says, what the word of God says. Well, because if they're being taught what that is, though, too, Tony, that requires them discipline to shift and and their life. And I don't think pe people think it's like everything's rainbows and because of the word that's been right. hijacked, even like the commercial that was on. Super Bowl, you know, he gets us. It's those kinds of things. And then, that is the worst. Right? Like, that is worse than somebody protesting in front of, say, a Christian church saying, you know, Christians are evil. Like, yeah. to me, they will, like, they're less offensive than what the God gets us thing was. Yes. That yes. was taken so out of context. Every yeah. part of those, those two of them. Every segment. Every segment yeah. was taken out of context and right. twisted by you know the rainbow mafia right. and 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 not just them i think they're just a small it's face the media, the it's whole the thing. media yeah. and it's the elites and yeah. it's these are just of course my opinions we're right there right with you. um so but but think about that think about how many millions of people were watching that and how many millions of people are struggling anyway right and you've got young people now who are so confused and that made them feel good and comforted yeah. And but yet you miss the other part. It's like it always reminds like if you look at like a football player, right? It's like you're you're not running that you're not running the play fully out. Right. To where, wait a minute, God actually says, I do love everyone, but turn from your ways and follow me. Right. And that's the discipline right. that people don't have today. No. They don't. No. And and that's what made me relook at my I had to clarify my understanding of what of God. Right. I had to clarify my understanding. And well, if somebody were to ask me, define Jesus to me, I, at three years ago, would have said something like, well, he's a son of God and he died for our sins. And, you know, we have to go through Jesus to get to the Father because that's what the Rome teaches. Right. right? And, right. and that's in my belief today true. Right. Um, but there was so much stuff added from Rome. Yeah. And I'm not just saying Rome. There was many others, but yeah. I'm just using that as an example. Yeah. I've gone back to the fundamental, fundamental. I haven't gone back to the scrolls, okay? Because I don't want to learn Aramaic or yeah. you know, Greek and all that. Right, the, right, the Hebrew. Yeah. But the people that I've researched and that are just basically about the fundamental of the gospel. Mm -hmm is who I started to surround myself with. And I started to literally say, help me understand this because I what that. I see what's going on doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I know like, and it's always been like this, my source of truth and my authority of truth comes from the Bible. Right. It comes from the word of God. That's really where all the truth comes from. Right. It's That's true. what we're basing it off of. Right. And now the truth is being manipulated. Uh, marriage is defined by God. It's not defined by man. Right. And it's pretty plain and simply written in the Bible how it's right. defined by God. Right. So I started to surround myself with pastors that were, you know, you know, whether they're Protestant, whether they're Methodist, what they were all like on that reformation kind of gospel of well and they were probably willing to share too, yes which was a big thing yeah. and because i was asking they want to have conversation yes and i said i want to understand it and then and they would sh and i would say well where does it say that and they would show me and you know some of these guys are hardcore yeah and and we talked about it before i'm like even some of this stuff i'm like it's a little too hard like it's it's tedious but it's it's an open book argument exactly exactly the closed book argument is the definition of Jesus. Right. It's like Jesus is the son of God. 
where you can go and say, hey, Buddha, and you can say yep. Krishna, and you can say any crystals from Sedona. Yeah, New Age. And, and any New Age stuff where you can say, you know, tarot cards, and nobody throws a hissy. Yeah. Okay. But as soon as you say Jesus Christ is the son of God, yeah. people get uptight. Yeah. Which in and of itself should let you know exactly. <laughs> that they should be uptight for a reason. Why are exactly. they so? I don't get uptight when people say Buddha. Yeah. Because they know it's not real. I mean, yeah. there's a... In the context of right, it. Right, in yeah. the context of it. Um, and I don't force it down anybody's throat. I just say, look, this is... My worldview now is biblical. Yeah. Like, like in the last two and a half years, it kind of has been, but I don't want it to be kind of. Yeah. I want it to be you, by scripture. You want to be all in. I want to be all in. Yeah. And... So then it was really an opportunity, I think. And that's why I love the mindset, you know, is that... When you look at those things, because so many people just kind of fell apart, you yeah. know, and, and rather than, you know, realizing that then the next step would be then to seek, how do you then create wholeness? Yeah. You know, and I think it's what you said. It's it's going back to the truth and scripture. Yeah. And that when you dive into that part of it, we have those moments in life to take them. Yeah. As, as, and, and so when you have these conversations with these with the different pastors and that kind of stuff. Are are the conversations really transparent? Do you feel like you're really yeah, you're, yeah, I really yeah. Do you? Yeah, because because a lot of them will say a quick short prayer mm -hmm. before we start, just okay. in a one on one session. And and the prayer will be about keeping themselves and their ego out of it mm, and just that. preaching the the word of the you know, the Lord. Yeah. Um and you know, when I would speak at meetings, even when I spoke to your crew. And if I would speak at a 12 step meeting or whatever, I would always, before I would speak to 10, 15 minutes before I would find like, you know, maybe a, a bathroom or a room, yeah. I could just close the door. I would get on my knees yeah. and I would pretty much say the prayer of, you know, God speak through me, what you would want me to say, right? what the words you would want me to say, not the words I want to say to make that story look greater than it was or that um adversity sound greater than it was yeah like not to embellish just to tell the truth and and well, you're to, asking for a spirit of humility yeah and man i tell you if you're and if you're nervous at all that nervousness goes away it goes away it's like it just disappears because it's not about you right <laughs> Yeah. And now like, That's it's like is, is public speaking 101. <laughs> we can we can get rid of all college classes right now. <laughs> There's a lot of people not happy with us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, you, I mean, you got to believe. Yes. Because if you don't believe, uh, who are you talking to? Well, and I think our world has built that to to to. And I, I like to say the new age movement, the self-help, you know, the universe has your back, that whole entire conversation. Yep. And I talk to a lot of young people, unfortunately, who who have, you know, gone that wayside and but they sprinkle in, which is what's confusing. It's like every truth is rooted in a lie or vice versa. Right. right? It's right. like when you hear someone. Right. Well, that is true. But let me extract that. Right. And I think that's the hardest part. And whenever you said earlier, you talked about like leadership and things like that in today's world and looking back. So who for you? Who was like your leaders? Like, like what impacted you as you went through all these, all these really difficult things of your own growth? Leaders that you wouldn't know about? Yeah. Um, my brother was definitely one of five, being five years older and, you know, definitely a leader and like a hero, yeah. you know? Um, there was another friend of mine as I got a little bit older who I looked up to a lot because looking back now it's like he lived correctly that's why i looked up to him right right maybe at the time i just was like why am i looking up like yeah he didn't do the cool um out of this world nonsense stuff that i thought you should do to get attention which well, i think i would quiet do. admiration for people yes. like that yes yes yeah. and then you know the and then for 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 references you would know about like like watching the movie rocky mm -hmm the the story of that movie yeah. was such a huge impact it, it oh, was like funny. to me it was like you know anybody can do anything yeah because this guy's nobody and look what he accomplished right and i and i knew it was a movie and it was not a documentary. But it's, it's the metaphor it's of the it. whole right and yeah. then as far as from a documentary standpoint almost within a 12-month period 
Pumping Iron is released mm -hmm. as a documentary Arnold. of Arnold, right? Yeah. And even though there was stuff set up in there and uh, most of it was legit and, and true, but look what that guy did. Yeah. You know, he came from Austria and look what he did in America. Yeah. What America gave him the opportunity to do. And, you know, I spoke to Cheryl about this probably a month ago because there's a documentary out about Arnold yeah. now. And the guy, I mean, like the movies he created, I love. The documentary was a, the, one of the biggest influences. He became the governor of the biggest state, one of yeah. the biggest states in the country. If, right. not, if I'm not sure if Texas or Cali is bigger, but. And everything, like the stuff he did, anything he set his mind to, he did. Yeah. Okay. But the one thing that stuck out to me towards, because I think it was a three-part mini doc, uh, that really stuck out to me at the end, it was towards the end, was he had this awesome house. And he wasn't married anymore because of the, you know, the affair. The affair. Right. And I thought, He's, you know, he's alone. Yeah. And he's got everything. Yeah. Everything but materialistically and worldly. But he's alone. Yeah. And I was like, don't get me wrong. I mean, the house looks awesome. <laughs> I mean, and, and like oh, they, empty. his whole life, what yeah. he did, like what he accomplished is you can't, I mean, that is just unbelievable what that man accomplished, but he's alone. Mm -hmm. And to me, like, and, and I'm not preaching that. I'm just saying what I observed. Yeah. Because I see myself. Yeah. Um. In in this part that I'm going to talk about, not the successes part, but right. this part of. It doesn't matter how much you like accomplish. It's good that, that you accomplish and accomplish yeah. and and are good, do good things. But. You know who are you with? Right. Who's your partner? Right. Who makes you know the two of you one, mm -hmm. and in a union, right? And, and then. Also now being, you know, head first into the studying of the Bible. And right. so anyway, it makes me go, well, I've already, you know, read through those parts of the book. And I'm like, well, this is the union of like, this is what God talks about right. in God's kingdom. Right. And I'm like, so he's fallible, Arnold. Right. I'm fallible. We all are. Right. But you can see the consequences of being fallible. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I, I, have those consequences daily. Yeah. Um, I just don't really complain about them very much. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of people have been lied to too. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people, especially when you look at what you perceive as successes, so many people have bought into it. I mean, it's like, I look at the young kids today and college kids and they're like, Oh, go out, sow your oats, have right. a huge body right. count, do whatever you want right. to do. Don't worry about it. Do it now. Eat the crap. I'm right. like, no, because you are in, you are imprinting behaviors and habits yeah. that you cannot remap when you get older. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, ha having that walk with Christ, we know that's our discipline and that's our compass. Right. But if you don't have that, you chase what the world tells you to chase. And then you have these role models and these influencers I can't stand, but yeah. you have them and, and you, and you realize that you're following the wrong people. Yeah. You know, and I love yeah. that you said you had these people that you brought together to, you know, to basically teach you and yeah. bring you along. Yeah. So where are you at with all that right now? Are you still like diving in or yes. was that like an intent? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I am um, on a daily basis. I mean, you know, I, I, I've been hitting my knees every morning when I wake up. It's the first thing I do. Um, and I ask God for guidance and help. And I say my prayer and um, I thank him for keeping me sober. Uh, but it's, the definite, you know, finding, getting clarity to make sure on the non-negotiable items, right. I had to get clarity, which 99% of what I thought was true is true. Um, and by no means am I going to be ever one of those people only because there's just so much to learn right. of, of like, hey, in you know, Romans 13, it talks yeah. about the law and <laughs> the hey, you know, listen to your government. It, yeah. It's like, hey, look. That if I knew it that well, it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. But I'll, my interest and my time spent studying the Bible um, and reading the Bible um, is probably an average of an hour to two hours a day. Yeah. Where before 2020, it was probably 20 minutes a day. Yeah. 
Well, it's applicable too, right? Yeah. How many people do you know that have all this great knowledge or can recite those verses? Right. When it becomes walking those things out yeah. against what the world tells you to do, yeah. they fall short. And 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 I don't mean that to judge people to fall short, but we have to understand that that is that is where the rubber meets the road for best way of saying. And it's all. I tell you, it's a hard way to live. It is. It, the, the, you know, they talk about the the gates to heaven are narrow. Yes. yes. And as I get older, I would always use the phrase, the, the longer you're sober, the narrower the road gets. Because what you could live with yourself five years ago, yeah. now you can't live if you're growing as a person. And, you know, I use that sobriety exam for, as an example, just because of 12-step work. But even now, like... I have nothing against 12 step programs. I still go, but I do have a problem with the God of your understanding in the steps. Right. That's right. That's just a personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, the 12 step program helped me tremendously, but I never ever had a doubt that it was God that got me sober. Right. Well, you so, had the discernment though. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, it's like there are hardcore theologians and pastors that will say that's a cult. And, and I'll be like, I can like I can see your point. Right. Okay. And I can see, you know, just go to the word of God and it says anything else but this. Right. And that falls under anything else. I right. get it. I still go for the opportunity for for two reasons. They were there for me when I came in. Right. And there's an opportunity to share the message if somebody's willing to hear it. Well, you're called to go into dark places and right. get the light. So, so that that's why I go. I don't go yeah. with the motive. Like, so my motive there has changed. I I, I don't. I'm not concerned about drinking or right. drugging. Right. Um. And and you know, there's and I'll tell you something funny that I mean, you might it might surprise you. It surprised me. <laughs> it really did surprise me that I did this. I've been I've been practicing hot yoga for probably 15 years. Not and, and I'd go into streaks of of more times than not. Yeah. To me it was just a for me it was like a detoxification of sweat and right. and maintaining pliability and being flexible. And one of the things came up in conversation in the study of scripture. I know about, where you're going. Okay, about <laughs> well what is yoga rooted in? Yes. It's rooted in a religion of Hindu, yes. Hinduism. And, and I, like, I remember literally, and like, it's like, I knew that, but I literally remember being in at the end of yoga class when you're supposed what they call Shavasana, right. I think, where you're quiet for five minutes, laying down on your back. And I would literally internally be praying to Christ. Right. 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 But I'm in yoga class. Okay. So it never really bothered me. It's like, I never even looked at it that way. Yeah. It never changed my point of view. And then it was explained to me, okay, they didn't say, look, you have to do this or yeah, you can't do this. Yeah. They just said, this is the word. Right. This is the definition. This is what's going on in the secular world. Right. Okay. And this is how subtle it is, they said. Mm -hmm. So I said, so, and I said, so I, so I probably shouldn't go to yoga. And they're like, that's only a decision you can make. Right, right. They said, but this is what we're saying. It's based in a religion that is not in the Bible, right. that doesn't exist. And you're basically telling Christ and that you believe in Christ and he's your savior. And to, you're going to go through Christ to get salvation, through repentance, through faith, by the grace of God, to get to the Father. Right. Yeah, you're hanging out with the Hindus. Yeah. Right. And and they were I'm telling you, I'm so blessed to be surrounded by the people that I am because they're not shoving it down your throat. Yeah. yeah. They're literally it just saying though. no, it because they know how resistant yes. it is. Yeah. And and that's why I try not to shove it down anybody's throat. Yeah. And I mean, I will say stuff that where people will shake their heads at me and I'll yeah. just be like, Look, I didn't make the rules. Yeah. You yeah. know. It, they've been written down for a long time. And so it's like, but yeah. now you know, right? Now it's I know. Like, it's like, if you don't know, you don't know, exactly. right? And, and, but now you But now that know. it was revealed to yes. me, yeah, I was like, okay, that's good to know because that is a subtle thing. Yes. Okay. Continued to go to yoga for about three classes. And then internally it's, I didn't start feeling good about it. It's like, funny that you say that because I was my oldest daughter. She loves yoga, but she's like you. She discerns through everything. Yeah. She's, a, you know, she's a follower of Christ. She's, a, I mean, does a great job of that. 
And when we, I would always be invited to the classes, I go, I ne I've never fit in. Right. I sat down. I just, it never right. resonated with me. Right. I never wanted to. And then once I started to, you know, kind of, and my prayer is always, God, reveal to me what you want me to know. That's always my prayer right. in the morning. Um, and then when he does, I'm like, really? <laughs> but, you know, but it's, I didn't see that. Right. Um, but, you know, it's like when I started to research this, I'm like, that it never fit me. I could sit right. in the class. I could sit there and I'm like, I just, it's just not, I'm not right. getting it. You know, yeah. it's, it's interesting yeah. even down to the meditation, you know, like the transcendental meditation where you open the penal gland. I'm like, no, you know, you got to understand this stuff. And, and you know, I love that they revealed that to you and then allowed you to, to make decide. the decision. Yes. And yeah. they said, look, if, if, you know, we can't make a decision for you, we right. can just, we can just share the word of God with you. Right. And we can take, because, because of their knowledge and the, their study and that's what they do. And they've been doing for 30, 40 years. Um, they're just giving me what I asked for. Right. And some of the stuff is obviously like, well, I didn't want to quit yoga. Yeah. You know, it's like, so I didn't ask for that, but I continue, like I said, I continued to go over two or three more classes, not even thinking twice about it. Right. Right. But all of a sudden I had this yeah. internal like discomfort. It was, it was, an it was, it was it, a discomfort. Exactly. And I was like, and I have nothing against the yoga people or the studio. Like personally, I have nothing against them. I was like, this doesn't feel right. But that's the transformation that people talk about. Even like when you said you didn't reach for alcohol or drugs or right. whatever with your, when your mom passed away, that there was something else that void was filled with God at yes. that time. It's the same thing with that though. Yeah. It's like, it's, we ask for these things. Yeah. And then when God gives them to us, yeah. then it's like you have, and you still have a choice. You always yeah. have a choice, right? Yeah. You always have a choice. Yeah. And so t t in today's world, Tony, with everything. And like, when you talked about, you know, with young men, and what they're dealing with right now, what do you see that you that you would like to impact in a more positive way? You know, I think the the old interpretation, there's this uh, what I've seen and heard firsthand and some stuff that I've seen on on online that, you know, this toxic masculinity is just a joke to me. Yeah. Like this, that whole thing is a joke. A That's just it. made up. Yeah. Um. But there is a, and I had it, like there's a, there's a certain um, reference you go to when you think of masculinity or a man's man. Right. John Wayne. Right. Clint Eastwood. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, we we're just talking about him. The gentleman and his wife. Oh, Victor Marx. Victor Marx. Yes. Man's man. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a list of people I could go down just from the top of my head, but it's like, that's masculinity. Right. Okay. Masculinity also. Well, that's biblical masculinity. That's biblical masculinity, right. which is the only kind. Exactly. It's the only true kind of masculinity. Exactly. I also think it's masculinity to hold the door open for mm -hmm. a woman. Yeah. Whether that's the woman that you are with or right. just it's like that's being masculine. That's right. not cowering. No. I think it actually takes a man to do that. Well, not only that, especially, and then you got the push side of the feminist part of it where the girls right. are like, I can do it myself. I'm like, yes, but you don't have to. Right. You know, and that's such a, such an interesting. It is. And, and it's, and you know, and I don't want to go on the feminist movement, but the feminist movement didn't really in the long run help the feminine, the women. Oh, goodness. It hurt now, them. Well, well, the first wave did. Right. The first wave did. The second wave and the third wave is what completely jacked everybody up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, but the masculinity today is very simple and very fundamental. Yes, it is. It's, it's what it comes intuitively to you as a man. And to me, and I think like, I'm so grateful for the parents, you know, that yeah. I had and my brother and that community that I grew up in because it, it came, it, it was just common sense, like masculinity. It's like, I don't expect a woman to be a bricklayer, not because she's not strong enough. Right. It's just because, you know, that's just, there's, there's other things that she could do that she can do better than a man. Right. That'll suit both of them. Right. Or, you know what I'm saying? And it's. No, and, and it's, and it's bad too, because I think that we could do a whole other show on that one. Right. Um, but I mean, it, it's bad too, because what people are not understanding is, is that they know it when you went, when you went back a little bit ago and you said that there, you know, God has a design for marriage and he has that there. It's, but we know it in our souls because it was breathed in. Right. Yes. And I talk to young men today and even young women. And it's so interesting because 
they know that they're they're actually yearning for a life that they never experienced. Right. You know, we did years ago. Right. But they know something's wrong in their soul. And right. I, I, I love that as like a point of entry yeah. to talk about what you just said. It's like, I mean, I worked in I worked in a farm. I worked for my dad. I right. mean, I've been lifting heavy, you know, bales of hay right. and horses and everything when I was a kid. I have a very strong foundation right. physically. Right. However, you know, I'm not going to be the person that's going to go out and do these physical jobs. Exactly. And then they're demeaning to guys now. They all want right. to be a YouTuber. Right. I'm like, we need vocations of and yes. men can do them better. They just, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I don't see women on oil rigs very much. No. I'm just saying. No. And <laughs> and it's not saying you can't do it. Exactly. It, that's what everybody's getting wrapped up in. Yeah. The, oh, are you telling me I can't do it? No. Yeah. What is, we're saying. And it's is, actually a beautiful thing when, when you have, like Tom and I have been married 30 years. And so there's been times where I know that I've had to step in, mm -hmm. you know, to do things when he wasn't there, he wasn't right. available. I think that's part of a relationship that nobody wants to talk about. And like you probably had an example with your parents, what they went through. They yeah. were a true partnership. Absolutely. They're, you're equally yoked in those things. Absolutely. And and I think that the conversations about this with like when we talked about like, like the young men and that and like what you're saying, like toxic, toxic masculinity, which is actually the lack of it that is toxic. Agreed. Um, you start to look at that we're messing with the divine order of yeah. of what we're talking about biblically. Yeah. And that's what I think a lot of young men are confused about today. As they should be. Yeah, confused. especially with the influence, the people of the, the right. whole social media, right. thing, the red pill movement right, right. now, all right. of it. And we, you know, you and I grew up in a generation where, and, and and we, you know, I can only speak for myself, but even the generation I grew up in, which was what I consider a great generation. Yeah. I even fell into the secular part a little bit. Right. Like right. not for a little bit, but for a good decade, yeah. or, you know, or, yeah. or whatever. And then I started to believe how great I was and started to believe into it was all about me. Right. And what and then looking back and I'm like, well, well it was all about you and you thought you were God. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and you, made and I made those least, decisions. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. rather than leaning on his understanding yeah. of what it is. And so I want to leave everybody with this, Tony. What do you think? I mean, as you're looking at the world and you're looking at the point of reference that you have, I mean, and, and I love talking to people that have, you know, a lot of different life experiences mm -hmm. to really kind of gather and discern through. And I love that you're a forever student of life because mm -hmm. I definitely can see that. And I think it's important too. What would you say to a lot of young men today who don't have that type of a reference to look to? You know, what would you, what advice would you give them? I would say, I would say this to them specifically or really anybody. Right. Um, go to the ultimate source of truth. The alt, like the ultimate source of truth, which is the Bible and the Word of God, 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 God breathed, mm -hmm. because that's where all of that, whether you want to call it intuition, my sixth sense, yeah. that, that's all biblical. That's just it's it's been bastardized in today's right. language, right? And it's been diluted and it's been taken out of context. If you really want to challenge yourself, whether you're a young man. Um, or even a young woman or anybody, adult man or adult woman, you want to challenge yourself to live correctly or to live the best life you can live, try to live by those commands in the Bible. Try to live by those rules. I've broken all of them. <laughs> I think we all have. I've broken all of them. And, and I, you know, once I went through it thoroughly, like really thoroughly from a biblical view, which was in the last few years, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I defied God in all of these. Yeah. And each time I did it, nothing but pain and, and, uh, you know, malevolence was in my life, um, of my own doing. Right. Right. Um, because That's some of it was literally side, going right? against the grain of God exactly. or the, the, I mean, like literally almost like in your face. Yeah. And that's why when I see a lot of these things going on in media or in real life, yeah, a whole nother issue, abortion, right? It's like, you know, you can do all you want, but you don't have to answer to me. Right, right. You right. don't have to answer to Tracy. Right. You have to answer to God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether you believe him or not, you have to answer to him. Right. That's my opinion. That's my belief. That's my uh, strong conviction. 
Um, no, but I love your advice to say, try to live by those as a challenge, no matter who is, you are. It's are, difficult. It's very difficult, but I think that's where we rise into. And I don't think people today are challenged in, in a good way to actually yeah. go, can I actually say no to this Correct. and yes to this? And can I actually discipline myself whenever it gets really destructive? It's in the, when you do start that, the transformation in yourself is like everybody like will have their own transform. It'll be like incredible. Yeah. Like what you notice about yourself and what you learn about yourself is like, I never realized. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is I just, I didn't know. Yeah. And, and it, it it's, it's not an easy task. It's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be easy. No, what you said, the gates are narrow. Yeah, the right? gates are and narrow. And, um, and you know, we're, we're, we're all fallible, mm -hmm. you know, it's just the way it is. And, uh, the, the closed book arguments I've got down, I understand <laughs> them. And to me, that's, that's the most important for if you, you know, for right. salvation. Right, 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 right. And like, you know, one of the side effect, interesting things that I found myself in the last two years is I don't think definitely not in the last year. I have not used that GD phrase. Yeah. And I used to use it like not a lot, but I used to use it like all the time. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just something, and I didn't, I didn't consciously be like, I'm not going to say that. No, it, it just, just went away. Got, it went away. That's the part that I try to explain to people. And we'll leave people with this. That's the part that I try to explain to people is, is that it's a supernatural understanding yeah. that, that occurs and you don't even realize it. Yeah. You are, you are, your posture is yes. different. It's different. So Tony, thank you so much. I appreciate this. And thank we're going to put, all, at, we're going to do this again. We're going to talk about the other sure. subject. We couldn't hit on. But um, we're going to put all the show notes, everything in the show yeah. notes on how to get that. And your incredible documentary, we're going to tag you. all that in there. Because I really want people to understand that no matter your age or what you've gone through, we can learn so much every single day. Absolutely. And we're naive if we think we can't. Yeah. I'm so, learning more now than right? I ever have. Yeah. I'm booked because I'm like, old. <laughs> I'm old as dirt. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we can't wait to see you next time.